Eric Kahn, ESI Group Industry Marketing Team here uh, with another installment of my re-recording of the live demos that we performed earlier this year for the ESI Live Heavy Machinery uh, program. And I saw that recording and was disappointed with the quality of that recording because of the way that we were streaming and recording that uh, demo session. And I thought, why don't I re-record that entire demo? So that's what we're doing here today. Uh, what I wanted to focus on today was this aspect of doing a serviceability validation for this heavy machinery. And in this case, what I want to do is I want to get up into that engine compartment and maybe I have to do some field expedited service while I'm here. So I'm going to go ahead and pop open pop open this clasp if I can handle it, right? So I pulled out this little pin. Don't worry about that. That's just a virtual reality pin. I'm going to pull open this hasp and then swing open this fender that covers the wheel and that rotates all the way out like a wing. And now hopefully I'll be able to open up that door and that gives me my environment that I'm trying to do the service with. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate what would happen if I were to climb up on top of that tire and go ahead and do the service while up there. But in order to help me do that, I'm just going to do a little bit of kind of mixed reality brute force fakery. I'm going to hover and I'm going to take one of my virtual hand controllers and set it on top of this crate that I set up so I could kneel on top of it, similar to that tire. And I'm going to navigate down until my hand controller becomes visible again. And that means that that hand controller is now well synchronized with the location of this crate that I have on the floor in front of me. Pick up that hand controller. And now when I kneel down in front of this crate, I'm doing work inside of that engine compartment, right? So I'm kind of kneeling on top of a, uh, it's a Pelican case that I normally use to transmit my VR equipment around. And I'm kneeling on top of it the same way that I would precariously kneel on top of this uh, big tire in order to do the service operation. And now one of the things that I might wonder myself is, what's it like to actually pull this thing open and do that work? Let's see if I can reorient myself a little bit more here. Sure, that works, and I'll move you guys virtually so that you can get a better vantage point of me doing this work. So maybe you can see me better there. So now I'm going to reach in to this engine compartment, and when I reach into this engine compartment, my hand is up against my boundary of my home office. So sorry about that uh, kind of effect when you see the boundaries come up. But I can reach out with my virtual hand and grab hold of that filter. And when I grab hold of that filter, you can see that the filter has to make its way around these hoses and cables and wires. And so these, in fact, are some sort of hoses that are part of this engine assembly. I had to get past two different hoses in order to pull this filter assembly out. And it's simple enough for me to place that filter up on top of the engine compartment. And maybe that's where I would stage the replacement filter for me to grab and put that back in here. Next thing I need to do is I need to replace this other filter. This other filter is, yes, being blocked by my real-world walls inside of my small office here, but I see if I can, yep, I can just get a hold of that. But what I notice is that there's another connector deeper down underneath there. So again, I have to trick my office into being larger than it actually is. And there we go. I had it for a moment. There we go. There. I pulled that uh, connector off the bottom of the filter. Now I can grab the second filter and budget around these cables and hoses again. And you can see that the collision between the uh, filter element and those adjacent hoses is being simulated in real time. And that gives me a real feeling for whether or not I'd be able to perform this field expedient service without having to take more of this engine apart. And this is a way for me to validate 
is this in fact a serviceable product and will I be able to make take care of this out in the field? So hopefully that's been informative for you today as you better understand how we can use virtual reality to address the human-centric product and process validation issues that you might have for your heavy machinery that you're working on or any other, other product that people interact with at the human scale. Thank you very much.